much for having me here today. I'm going to be talking about a chapter that's entitled Changing Seasonality of the Sea, Past, Present, and Future. And I am going to ask that you learn one new vocabulary wor uh, word today, but only one. That word is phenology. That refers to basically seasonal cycles um, in biology and how they change. And this slide that's behind me has several examples of phenological cycles. So as terrestrial animals that live on land, one that we're all very familiar with is bud burst, where in spring, trees have their buds come out. Other examples of phenological events include migrations that are seasonal, so migrations of monarch butterflies and salmon. And lastly, for many animals, they reproduce seasonally. So I have a picture of a cute baby seabird to, uh, um, as an example of that. And then one thing I want to mention is basically phenology is really important in ecosystems because it structures interactions between organisms. Essentially, if you are interacting with another species, either as a predator or prey of them or a competitor, that interaction is not going to happen and not going to work out if you're not active during the same season. So to go through the section on the past history of phenology, I'm going to highlight the work of one person who's have influenced um, some of my work, that's David Cushing, and he came up with the match-mismatch hypothesis. This uh, diagram is showing you kind of the background of that hypothesis. It posits that many fish have evolved to reproduce at the same time as plankton blooms because that allows for basically there to be plenty of food available for larval fish and they have higher survival, faster growth, and that results in higher fisheries production. However, in some years, things don't work out as the fish planned, and they might reproduce too soon or too late, and they miss the plankton bloom, resulting in the inverse of that situation where you could get lower fisheries production. Now, this has been studied since the 70s, and some research on it goes back even further. So these are species that have been shown to exhibit these dynamics, and they include species that are commercially important, such as cod, salmon, and herring. So moving into the present, phenology is often considered a fingerprint of climate change and its impacts on marine ecosystems. You might be asking, what do I mean by a fingerprint? Well, we know that phenology is going to change as the world warms in a predictive uh, manner that's kind of easy to predict. So we can see if those changes are actually happening and then see if they match the fingerprint of what we expect. So, what we would expect is that as temperatures warm, we would get earlier springs, longer summers, later falls, and then shorter winters. And on land, we have seen this fingerprint and phenology and its changes are one of the most de detectable impacts of climate change. However, in marine ecosystems, um, early studies that have focused on this at global scales really left out the ocean including less than 4% of the species in those analyses. Once we started studying this in the ocean, we found that phenology was changing, and the rate of that change on average was 4.4 days uh, per decade, which is actually a lot faster than what's happening on the land. So this is happening in the ocean, it's happening quickly. We've also been studying how this uh, happens on an organismal level. So these are either amounts of change or variations in phenology for different groups of marine organisms. And what you can see here is all these rates of change are different among these organisms. So they're not changing at the same rate, which means that basically things that were once aligned might become unaligned, destructuring how ecological interactions occur. So what may the future hold? And this has actually kind of been like the highlight of my own nearest research. So I produced one of the first models comparing changes in the timing of phytoplankton blooms and when fish spawn. I looked at this for fish with uh, basically fixed spawning grounds. And the areas in red are showing that a lot of these fish are spawning too soon relative to their prey. However, if we let the fish move around and change the habitats that they use in response to climate change, matches are more likely to happen. So the question in the future is which species are going to follow which dynamics? 
but it does look like we are going to see more mismatches under climate change, and this has impacts in terms of lower fish survival and growth. Um, it has impacts in terms of reduced fisheries production, which then impacts humans through basically availability of fish as a protein source. And then lastly, there are some instances where these phenological mismatches could lead to even local extinctions, which obviously is something that, as conservationists, is a concern to us. So with that, I am going to conclude, and thank you very much.